All right, so in this video, we're going to cover uh, really basic uh, information about the IPv4 address, uh, how it's constructed, the parts, and uh, things like that. Uh, there's going to be a second video on a subnet mask, so an IPv4 subnet mask. So we're going to separate it into two parts. So watch the first one explaining an IPv4 address. You know, it's, again, basic stuff, but it's really important to know. Uh, and then watch the mask video after that. So, uh, all right, here we go. Okay, so an IPv4 uh, for address. So um, again, pretty basic information, but uh, make sure you have this information like really solidified in your mind of how it works. So we'll go through this kind of quickly. Uh, hopefully, it won't uh, take too much time. Uh, an IP before address uh, is a 32-bit address, right? So um, 32 bit, uh, two bits long. Um, it's that's a lot. It's a pretty big address. Uh, at one time, it was considered really big. Uh, lots, lots of bits, um, billions of um, different combinations that you can have with that many bits. But unfortunately, as everybody knows, um, because the uh, all the new devices that have popped up over the years, cell phones, tablets, and portable um, computers and things like that, um, that we've essentially run out of IPv4 addresses, which is why we're moving toward IPv6, uh, hopefully as soon as possible. I love IPv6. Um, but we're still kind of stuck in an IPv4 world, a lot of web um, servers and, and other uh, uh, domains are all set up to be uh, with IPv4, so it's very still uh, much entrenched. Um, so an IPv4 address is broken into four parts um, with eight bits in each part, right? So we call those octets, right? So each part is separated by a period, right? So there's eight bits in each part, and each part is called an octet, right? Um, so, so what we've done is it's a little easier. We've made it a little easier for human beings to uh, say an IPv4 address. I mean, I, if someone comes up to me and says, hey, what's your IP address? And I say one one zero 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 one zero. I mean, that'd be a real pain, right? So instead of having to say an IPv4 address, address in that format, we've changed it into a decimal format just by breaking it up into um, four parts. And each part has eight bits in each part. And uh, so if you had eight bits right together, which is, of course, a byte. We love bytes, like I talked about earlier in binary conversion. If you take one of these octets, just one of them, that's eight bits, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it's all zeros, obviously it's a zero in decimal. But if it's all ones, right? Uh, that is all ones, eight ones would be 255 in decimal. So, so the range of available numbers in each octet is from zero to 255. That's as high as you can go because you only have eight bits to play with. Um, an ad IP4 address is broken into two parts, right? We have what is called the network portion of the address and the node portion. You can also call that the host. A lot of people call it the host portion now. Um, I'm kind of old school. Everything was a node 20 years ago. Now we'd be calling them a host, which doesn't really matter as long as you, you know, know what the other person is talking about. Um, and so I've written a quick example of a, um, of a IP address here, 200.10.10.1. And I haven't given you a subnet mask, and we're going to talk about subnet mask on the next video. But just because um, I'm using a, a classful system, a class A mask, I'm sorry, this is not right. It's a class C mask. Let's pretend I'm using a class C mask. Uh, I should edit that later. Uh, it's a class C mask. Um, with a class C mask, um, the network portion of this address would be here, right? These three octets. And then the last octet will be left over for the host portion, right? So. A mask has a very singular job to separate the two portions of an IP address, um, but, um, but we're going to cover that again later, so no big deal. So what is used to differentiate a network portion of an IP address and the node portion? A subnet mask. Again, next video. No big deal. Okay, so an IPv4 address. So um, I always like to talk, uh, use a, a little bit of an example in my, when I teach this class, of a regular letter, a mail, right? So let's just say, um, one of my students, uh, ex-students, wants to let, send me a letter, good old-fashioned letter, right? And I know who does that anymore, but just bear with me here, right? So good old-fashioned letter, right? And um, they want to mail it to my old school, Holmes High School, right? Holmes High School. That's where I used to teach for a long time. Anyway, so they, they put, it a, 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 put a letter, write a letter, they put it in an envelope, and on the envelope, of course, they have to put the address. So they put my name at the top. And then this address to the school is 6500 Ingram Road, San Antonio, Texas, 78238. That is actually true. That is the true address of Holmes High School, if you're wondering. And uh, so they want to mail it to me, right? So let's take a look at this address real quick, this, this information, right? What part of the address is 
important to the um, to the mailman, right, who's going to deliver the letter to the, to the school, right? So really the only portion of this address that matters to the mailman is right here, right, the actual address. My name on that portion of the address means absolutely nothing to the mailman, right? It, 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 in fact, you could just put resident on there or you could put anything you want, you know, Mr. C, whatever you want. And again, the mailman could care less because that portion of that address really doesn't mean anything to the delivery of of the letter to the school, right? Because the mailman wants to deliver it to the school. And again, all they're concerned about is the actual address of the, of the, of the site, right? So that is what's going to get the letter to the school, this portion of the address, right? The, the 600 the portion in red. Well, once, so, he, so here we go. So the mailman comes into the school and he actually will take it to this building here. This is the I building. And this is all totally true. The I building is um, the building where um, um, the main office is. And inside the I building, um, there's a little portion of this building called the teacher's lounge, right? The teacher's lounge. And in the teacher's lounge is against one of the walls is a huge set of boxes. We call them the teacher's boxes. You probably, maybe y'all remember that from school. And let's come like this. We call these like little cubbies, right? Cubby holes. And every teacher has a little cubby. And mine was three over, one, one, two, three, and five up. One, two, three, four, five. This used to be my box <laughs> at Holmes High School. This is totally true. I'm not making this up. And that's where I would get my mail whenever someone sent mail to me at the school, right? So, so, so how does it work? Okay, so here we go. So the mailman brings this big bin, right? A big bin of mail, right? And in the, it had mail on it, right? Mail. And he would walk, he would drive into the school, right? He would park, get out of the car, um, come into the I building. And in the I building, there would be a desk, a front office desk with a little a secretary there. And he would put the mail on her desk and say, have a nice day, right? No big deal. And he delivered the mail. And it would be full of mail for all the teachers there at the school. be a bunch of mail inside this box, tons of mail. And then, but he didn't put it inside our cubbies, right? That wasn't his job. His job was to deliver it to the school and put it on that desk. Once the desk, uh, put on the desk, the secretary here in the I building would give this box to a student and the student would carry it to this room, the teacher's lounge, and then they would sort all the mail and start putting it in all the teacher's boxes, right? All the teacher's boxes. So, of course, when this letter was there, the student would see my name right? And put it in my box, right? So what portion of the address matters to the student? Only this portion, right? The student really didn't care about anything else, right? Didn't care about the 6500 Ingram Road, right? So, so, so that's important to remember about a mail address, right? So the student, once it was in our network, all it cared about was this, the IP address or the name on the letter, right? So let's just say, just for fun, just for fun, just Let's talk about this real quick. Let's just say that for some reason, um, when the person who wrote this letter, the student sent to me, put my name in the address. So they, instead of putting it on top, right, they put 6500 Johnny Carrera Ingram Road. I can't write around, right? Oh, you, get the, you get the, the picture, right? He put my name inside this portion of the address, right? Put my name in there. Then put it on top and put it in there, right? So what happens if my student would have done that? Well, there is no street called 6500 Johnny Carrera Ingram Road, right? That, so that doesn't make any sense to the mailman. So the mailman would just throw this letter away because there is no street called Johnny Carrera Ingram Road, right? So uh, it's important to keep those two pieces separated some way so that we understand that what portion of the address is the school's address and what portion is the actual person it's going to, right? Well, it's the same thing with IP addresses, right? So let's go to the next slide. So same thing with an IP address, right? An IP address needs to know what network it's in, right? And also needs to know what the address of the actual node is for, right? So let's just say a piece of information is headed for, it needs to go to 200.10.10.1, right? Well, um, the other computer that's sending this letter or this information to it, so let's say it's an outside source, some, some, something outside wants to send this information to this node, right? Well, the, uh, the, the computer needs to know the 
actual network that this node is in, right? So it needs to find a way to separate out this information and it has to know where it is also. So it's kind of a little bit more complicated than that. So how will this information get to this network? Well, it's going to get to this network with this address, right? That would be the 6500 Ingram Road, right? To get to this network, go here, right? Once it's in the network, this is how we find the actual node that the data is meant for, right? So this computer wants to send data to this computer. Uh, it's in this network. And then once it's in, it goes to this computer. So that's why it's very important to understand that there's two parts when I keep for address. One part is the network portion. The other part is the node portion, right? Network and node. And it needs to have a way of separating them so we can find the network. And then once we find the network, we find the node in that network. All right. So anyway, so that's IPv4 address. It's important to know the two parts. Um, it's, and again, the other, uh, the other video is showing how to change binary to hex, I mean, um, decimal to binary, and binary to hex decimal. Make sure you really know how to do that skill um, because when we get to subnetting um, classes, that skill is going to come in real handy. All right. So that's an IPv4 uh, address in a nutshell. And please watch the next video on subnet mask. And also there's a little quiz at the end of this video. So please take the quiz. All right.